Hello there, squirrels. It's time to read chapter 13. <laughs> and of course, I came in here with nothing to drink. <clears throat> Seems like every time I do, I don't sip out of it anyway. Okay, Silas agrees to meet me at the patisserie. On 3rd Avenue for breakfast, he's concerned that Odell may be beginning to suspect I've inherited my grandmother's gift for visions, and Silas has yet to develop a plausible cover story. No doubt, Odell would be shocked to learn that not only did I inherit my grandmother's clairvoyance, but also somehow I have a full set of psychic gifts. Unable to face the deathly cold wind knifing across the lake, I opt to drive to, oh gosh, why'd y'all tell me this, how to say this? Bless you. <laughs> Bless in C-H-O-U-X, which I was reading. Chow. <laughs> Bless chow. Bless you. I park across the street and have a good laugh when I see Silas's 1908 Model T. How he drives that in the winter, I will never know, but I suppose people drove it in the winter back in the 1900s. It's not like weather is a new invention. Hurrying across the street, I open the door to the bakery and inhale deeply. Ah, why does that pastry smell so heavenly? Silas nods his bald head in my direction. I slip onto the seat opposite him. him. I took the liberty of ordering you a hot chocolate and one of those chocolate croissants you're so fond of. Thanks, you know me too well. Anne stops at the table, sits down her tray, and unloads the contents. Good morning, Mitzi. How you like the spring weather? I look up, and if not for the added benefit of my extrasensory perceptions, I wouldn't be able to tell whether she's serious. My clear sentience confirms she actually feels this is lovely spring weather. It's a little chilly for an Arizona girl, but I hear the locals are happy. Indeed, at this rate, we'll be putting our lawn chairs in the snowbank and getting a decent tan before the end of April. She scoops up her tray, nods and giggles all the way back to the kitchen. I look at Silas and shake my head. I think it's freezing, and I think she might be crazy. Silas chuckles until his cheeks turn red and his jowls shake. Let me talk about Silas' jowls. I'm getting on to. Anne never fails to see the sunny side of life. I think that's what everyone appreciates about her. Taking a careful sip of my steaming cocoa, I utter an audible yum as cinnamon kiss chocolate trickles down my throat and warms my belly. Oh boy, do I have some news for you. By all means proceed, Silas carefully stirs the whipped cream into his hot chocolate to avoid decorating his mustache and dives into his croissant with a knife and fork while I regale him with my news. What would you say if I told you that Brandy Hammer, the, off, the owner of Fox Mountain, <coughs> obtained a love potion from that infernal gypsy woman? The disdain in Silas's voice is palpable. Wow! Why don't you tell me how you really feel? Silas fixes me with an odd look. I believe I did. I shake my head. It's an expression. Let's not get lost in it. Is there any way for me to trace a potion like the way you're teaching me to recognize charmed objects? Could I recognize someone under the influence of a potion? I doubt that gypsy has the skill to create a legitimate potion. I fear she's found yet another way to bilk her customer customers. With nothing more than snake oil. Snake oil? Like venomous? Silas chuckles. I believe it's what you would call an expression. Clearly a reference from before your time. I purse my lips and raise an eyebrow. Do you think I should let Eric know? Silas carefully sets down his fork and knife and wipes his mouth with the corner of his napkin. To what end? I don't know, but 
she shouldn't be selling fake crap to people, should she? I mean, it's kind of shysty. Silas shrugs. Perhaps it's none of your concern. However, if you truly wish to pick up Isadora's mantle, then your information may be of some interest to the sheriff. The implication that I will pick up my grandmother's feud and carry it out for another generation is offensive and heartwarming at the same time. I don't want to be known as petty, but the idea that I have a family feud on my own, like the Hatfields and McCoys, gives me a happy heart. Maybe I will continue the feud. I'm not sure unscrupulous gypsies should be allowed to operate freely. Fair enough. It would appear that you have managed to manufacture a legitimate justification for paying a visit to Sheriff Carper. Silas winks and dives back into his croissant. It's my turn to chuckle. Advantage, Willoughby. He snickers at my tennis reference as he thoughtfully chews. I order a slice of quiche to back up my croissant consumption and enjoy every wonderfully warm, fluffy bite of my bacon and Swiss delight. I used to make quiche Lorraine, and that's Swiss and bacon. It's so good. I love good quiche. A good quiche. Uh, no, 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 no. I think I walk over to the station. That's a lot of buttery, flaky pastry crust sitting heavy in my tummy. Silas nods. You'll update me, of course. Of course. By the way, any leads on whatever that book is? He shakes his head mournfully. A great loss. Breaks my heart. It was the first volume Ms. Adora acquired. For the rare book sloth, not only have we lost a piece of arcane history, but I fear we've lost a little piece of Myrtle Isadora's history as well. This news weighs heavy on my heart. Family and the nostalgia that accompanies it has gained a great deal of importance to me in the last few months. Should I file a report when I'm at the station? Silas glances up at me. Yes, that'd be... Uh, that would be prudent. A police report will be a, a required for the insurance claim. Insurance claim? Twiggy has no doubt informed you of the value of your rare books collection. I'd be remiss if I had not instructed your grandmother to insure such a valuable asset. Copy that. I'll file a report and update you later. I wave to Anne and rub my tummy with delight as I leave. She chuckles and resumes assisting her customers. The spring sun is gaining strength and the temperatures, temperature has actually climbed high enough that the steady pitter-patter of melting snow and ice offers a strange accompaniment on my walk to the sheriff's station on Main Street. Stepping inside, I stomp off my boots on the dingy floor mat and proceed to the counter. Curious monkey sits at the desk, busily tapping and swiping on her phone, almost certainly playing the addictive game for which I've nicknamed her. But it shocks me motionless when she looks up. Hey, Mitzi, been kidnapped lately? She laughs at her own joke and returns to her game. Deputy Bard, her actual name, may or may not have been part of the team which rescued me from one of my misadventures, but that's another story entirely. There's only one officer in the sheriff's station that time forgot. He sits at his dented metal desk, handwriting a report. He looks up as I pass, but I quickly shift my gaze to the terribly interesting wood paneling behind him. No sign of Deputy Pawson, which is always a plus. I peek into Eric's office, but he's on the phone, so I'll wait outside like a polite adult. <laughs> <coughs> well, that doesn't make any sense. We can't find out where it came from if we don't know what it is. Double check your results and get back to me. He bangs down the receiver and what I feel is an unnecessary with what I feel is an unnecessary amount of force, exhales and leans back in his chair. Come on in, Moon. I don't care for his tone, but at least we drop miss from the moniker. Bad news? He laces his fingers behind his head, and as usual, my eyes wander and lap up every pixel of the lovely image before me. 
He ignores my question. What brings you in? Taking a seat that wasn't offered, I politely respond to his question, even though he overlooked mine. A couple of things. I need to file a report for, for a theft at the bookshop, and I came across a strange piece of information that may or may not prove useful. Speaking of which, you wouldn't happen to know anything about an SD card that was pushed through the mail slot in the front door of the station by someone wearing a ski mask and gloves, would you? Internally, I'm thrilled with Quince's flair for the dramatic, but externally, I school my features once again into a portrait of innocence. An SD card? I don't even have a camera. Eric chuckles and leans forward. Why does that answer not surprise me? I adjust the collar of my jacket and shrug. So this theft <clears throat> at the bookshop, another break-in, he asked. I don't think so. The new security system is solid. I think this jerk actually stole the book during that fundraiser we had last week. A book? You want to file a police report on a missing book? I'm not sure that would even qualify as a petty crime. Eric smiles as he rubs the back of his neck with one hand. It's not just any book. It's like 300 years old and it's insured and everything, according to Silas. He tilts his head in a way that indicates I've piqued his interest. Your place was crawling with people that night. No one saw the theft. We were hosting a fundraiser for the animal shelter. It's not like we had security on site. As soon as I utter the words, I realize my terrible mistake. Eric leans back and I see the moment momentary hurt in his eyes actually i think you did have security for him sorry well did you see anything suspicious he laughs off the uncomfortable situation twiggy called me down to walk in Marillas to his car her car with the cash box but other than that i never left the law I guess I'll talk to my dad and Amaryllis to see if they have a copy of the guest list. It's a good place to start. What's the other information you have for me? I was out at Fox Mountain. I'm aware his bright blue eyes turned stormy and he crosses his arms as he glares. A toddler having a snit would be subtler. Clearly, Eric hasn't forgiven me for my ski date. I'd love to tell him that I dropped Rory like a hot, rotten potato. But it's really none of his business. Anyhow, I got to know the owner, Brandy Hammer. We were having drinks last night. Eric shakes his head. I hate to break it to you, but Brandy's not real discerning about who she has drinks with. I figured that out pretty quick. The point is, after she'd had a few, she told me that she'd recently picked up a love potion from a gypsy for herself. No way. She gave this love potion to her boyfriend, at least some guy she wanted to be her boyfriend. Name? No. But she did mention that she'd given him a free room, meals, and a ski pass. There should be some record of that. Why is that... Why is this any of my concern? I don't know. It just seems like a shady thing to be selling people, and it's my understanding that this gypsy woman has had some less than legitimate business transactions in the past. Eric leans back, and his chair creaks as he laughs. Oh, that's your understanding, is it? Did someone bring you up to speed on your grandmother's history with Mrs. Nowak? In fact, someone did. I'll go ahead and let him assume it was Silas, which is partially true. The fact that my grandmother chimed in with her side of the story is none of his concern. Can I file that stolen book report with you? I give him my best attempt at a sexy smile. He burst into what can best be described as the giggles. Rude. He catches his breath, wipes a little laughter tear from the corner of his eye, and explains. It was just the way you put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. He chuckles a little bit more. I can appreciate that reference here, Eric. View from the top, the circa 2003 Mike Myers movie. 
He nods and continues in a calmer tone. You said file the stolen book report, which obviously makes it sound like you stole a book report from a poor little elementary school kid. I don't know. Jokes aren't funny when you have to explain them. I give him a courtesy chuckle. Copy that. So about that report, he presses a button on his phone. Deputy Bard, I need you to take a stolen property report from Miss Moon. I'll send her to your desk. Walking toward the door, I look over my shoulder demurely. Thanks, Eric. He shakes his head. Still Sheriff Harper. I add a scandalous wink. If you insist. I always do, for all the good it does. He smiles warmly at me. Those beautiful blue eyes light up just for a moment. That smile will get me through three days at least. Thanks. I walk out of Eric's office and Deputy Bard waves me toward her desk. I file my report and head back to the doorstop. <laughs> Did I say doorstop? Bookshop? At least I think that's the only thing I've goofed up on. Woohoo! And it's 109 a.m. Back to the bookshop <laughs> to fill in grams on all the big doings. Which totally sounds like something my mom would say. Big doings. Love y'all. Be sweet, don't be ugly. Remember, I won't be on tomorrow. I'll miss y'all, but um, we've got a party, you know. Take my brother to the... Not really a party, but take him out for his birthday. Golden Corral, he loves it. Y'all be sweet, don't be ugly. Good night, good day, good whatever it is. Bye-bye.